This computer has never run any Python code in its life. Can I run this Streamlit application there without installing Python, nor Docker, nor downloading any assets from the internet? This is where STLite comes into play. The library enables us to run Streamlit applications in the browser without installing Python thanks to Pyodai. Then you can convert this serverless application into a desktop executable using Electron. And that way your manager or your marketing team, they, they don't have to install Conda or Docker to actually run your streaming app. They just double click on the icon and, and just go for it. Challenge accepted, data fans. I just created this multi-page application with some text, a preview from data and the image of a penguin that's been loaded from a folder next to the script. In a sub page, I also load a 404 Lottie animation from the same image folder as the penguin. Let me show you the structure of the project. At its roots is a Streamlit app folder which contains our Streamlit script, the pages folder with a sub page, and an image folder from which the assets are loaded from. Since I use Plotly to plot a pandas data frame and the Streamlit Lottie component to load an animation, I will add them to a requirements text at the root of the project. STLite uses Pyodai to run Python code inside your browser, but not all Python packages are supported yet. Pure Python packages with wheels on PyPy will work correctly, but packages or Streamlit components that rely on C extensions like, like pandas or OpenCV or XGBoost, they need to be recompiled for Pyodide. And you can check the supported packages in the following page. Uh, this is where you see the list of all the packages that, that have been recompiled. At the root of your project, create a package.json file and copy paste the content from the stlite desktop readme into this file. This project is now an npm project in which stlite can be installed. But to run an npm install, you first need npm. So go install it. Don't worry about me. I'll have some tea. Actually, just water. I don't have tea. Back to the command line, run npm install. This will install all dependencies that are specified inside the package.json file into the node modules folder specifically for this project. All the pinned versions of the dependencies are also tracked in a new package log file. This file and the node modules folder, they can be git ignored as soon as possible. You don't need to push 100 megabytes of package data to GitHub and they can be regenerated from an npm install on the package JSON file. When the install is done, all script commands from the package.json file will be available through the npm run command. The first step is to dump our Streamit app folder into a Pyodite project. Start typing the npm run dump command followed by the folder you want to dump. This folder must contain a Streamit app.py file. This for now is a hard-coded requirement for STLite. We also need to link the Pyodite versions of some of our packages because they're not all supported in a Pyodite environment. You can declare all the packages in the same line after the folder that you want to dump. And to make things easier, you can also pass the R flag pointing to your requirements.txt file and the dump command will do the job of parsing the dependencies in the file one by one. There should now be a new build folder. It contains your application code, your external resources like the pages and the image folder, the stlite executable and the pyodite version of the packages. You can imagine this like a compiled for browser version of your Streamit app, which means you'll need to rerun the dump and every time you're making edit to the source code of your app. Before packaging the Pyodite compiled version of your Streamit app, let's actually test that this compiled version works. There's a serve script in the npm project. You can run npm run serve to test the compiled version of the project. But if you're running on Windows, your command line will generally not recognize the line for setting an environment variable. And for that, I would duplicate this line. After all, it's it's my project. I, I do whatever I want. Rename it to serve Windows, remove the environment variable from the line, and then do it manually in the command line before running the serve methods. Run the command and, and wait for a little and a new window will pop out and your streaming app will be loaded inside this window. This usually takes a couple of seconds. You can study the life cycle of the app in the developer tools. It takes some time, so use this time to grab a cup of tea and then subscribe to my channel. Oops, 
we got a problem, data fan. If that ever happens to you, first freak out a little bit. <laughs> Then come back to your senses and make sure you're using the latest version of ST Lite. Go back to your package.json, upgrade the version of the ST Lite dependency you're using, feel free to delete the node modules and the package log file and rerun npm install and recompile everything. Serve your project again, wait for it, and this time it works! And if it doesn't, then leave a comment, <laughs> sorry, otherwise we're halfway there. We now need to package this Pyodite project into an Electron executable desktop app. Uh, we use the Electron Builder package for this role, which should be installed since it's specified in the package.json file. Here's the Electron Build help page. You will, you will notice there all of the configurations for the packaging of your app are to put inside a build object in your package.json file. Like for example, if you, if you want to build a portable Windows executable because I don't want to install anything on my machine, I head to the Windows target page and find out the configuration to write down into my package.json file. I don't know if it's because of a story of when I tried to package a Qt project from Windows to macOS and, and it didn't work out at all, but I would recommend sticking to packaging the project in on the same platform as your target platform. So use a Windows machine to package for Windows, use a Mac to package on Mac, and use a Linux to package for Linux. I haven't tried cross-platform packaging. Apparently it could work, but I haven't tried this, so I don't know if it works. When you feel confident in your configuration, run the dist command. This runs the electron build and, and reads the build configuration from your package file. Let it work a little bit and a new dist folder makes its appearance with an executable. Copy and paste it somewhere on your desktop and double click on it. There is our beautiful Windows Portable app. It works well, it's a little long to load since it's running Python in a, a sandbox Chromium environment, I think, uh, which is recreated at every launch, but it works, so... Yay! Hey, let's make a quick last edit to our app. Here's an assets folder which contains an icon I want to use for the app. Head back to the configuration page of Electron Build, look for the icon page, find the icon argument, and add it to package.json. Repackage your app, and there's your icon. Hey, real life test. I didn't actually try to transfer it yet to my older computer, so we're going to do that. Let's put this executable file in this beautiful MongoDB USB stick and let's let's see how it goes. Yeah, it's taking some time. This is a very old computer. This is normal. Good. Very plot. Perfect. And plot the animation. There you go. 